fed up of floor droves, driven to distraction and drowning with doom boxes, tired of living in chaos? Welcome to Decluttering Untangled, how to declutter when you're overwhelmed, ADHD or autistic. I'm going to help you uncover the secrets to decluttering, no matter what hurdles you face. You'll discover how to declutter, de-stress and transform your world. I'm Heather Tingle, reformed hoarder, neurodivergent declutter queen and your guide through the maze of mess. Let's get untangled. Hello Untanglers and welcome to Decluttering Untangled with me, Heather Tingle. Today's podcast is something I hope is timely for you as it's about back to school organisation. Apologies for those of you in Scotland or if the kids are already back at school. However, it's never too late to make a start. So at this point, I want to say that if you don't have children or if they're no longer school age, then it still might be worth listening as the strategies I'm going to go through with you are the same whether you're five or 50. It's just the items that we're talking about that might be a little bit different. So first of all, it's never too late to start. So if you've never been organised with school stuff before, it's fine. Don't worry about it. That's why you're here. Also, if the kids are already at school and you feel like you don't know what's going on in the world and you've totally lost the plot, that's okay too. And I'm expecting that, so don't worry. What I would like you to do is to start having a bit of a routine. And I know that sounds a bit scary, especially if you're ADHD, but get in the routine of the minute the kids come home from school, that you have a place for things like book bags. You have a place for where their water bottles go. You have a place for where their lunch boxes go. So your children themselves, even if they're really little, know where to put them. It's no good just them dumping them wherever when they come in, whether it's on the settee one day or on the stairs another day or just by the front door another day. You want to have a space that is really obvious. So even if it's just a cardboard box for the time being that has the word bottles and bags on it, for example, you want a place for shoes, you want a place for coats, extracurricular stuff like football kit or swimming kit, you want them all to have a home. And I know it's so simplistic to say, if things have a home, it makes life so much easier. But it really, really does. So even if you can just get a home for one or two things, it will make every day so much quicker and easier for you. Things like lunch boxes. I really struggle with lunch boxes because they're one of those things that at the beginning, I got one that I'd got to hand wash. I'm never going to hand wash lunch boxes. They get all sorts of minging leftover food left over in it and it's all a bit uh, grim and they're the kind of thing that if they get left they go moldy and you just uh, no so I struggled until I realized I could buy two really decent quality lunch boxes that were both dishwasher dishwasher safe because I have a routine where every morning I unload the dishwasher and every evening I load the dishwasher So I got into a routine of having two. One would always be washing and drying while the other one was in use. So I would always just rotate them. It made life so much easier to have one that could be washed in a dishwasher overnight and it'd still be a little bit wet in the morning, but that's okay because I had the other one on tap. So I would take it out of the dishwasher in the morning, put it on the kitchen side at the side of the sink and by the following morning, it was dry and ready to go. So I didn't even have to dry it because... I haven't got time in in the morning to be drying lunch boxes out of dishwashers. So I had two and would, would rotate them. So that's really useful. And also the same with water bottles as well. I cannot stand the idea of having mouldy water bottles. So if you can have two on rotation, even if it is just um, you know, the reusable water bottle that you've got from somewhere, or if it's a really expensive posh ones that obviously all the kids want, then try and, and rotate them so you've got one in use while the other can be washed or dried. I also really like little hooks. I think hooks are amazing for things like books, book bags, because book bags are always the things that kids lose. They take them up into the bedroom, they're seen again, they go down the side of the sofa, they get kicked under a table, they just get lost, don't they? So book bags, I think, are the bane of parents' life in that they're basically they where children and possibly teachers hide information for you until it's too late for you to find it. So try and get into the habit of having hooks for book bags. So as soon as they come in, they either put it on the hook or they give it you or put it in the box that says book bags and you get into the habit of going into that book bag 
every afternoon or evening, just checking what's inside it. I mean, when I know that we're all meant to be like reading the book that's in there, but you know, let's let's be honest about this. It doesn't always happen. So, you know, go in the book bag, see if there's any letters from school, any invitations that you've suddenly been invited to, any random things in there that you know should have been took out ages ago. And get into that habit of of getting emptied when it comes home every every afternoon and then put it on the hook ready for the next morning the same with shoes and the same with coats now because we don't have a lot of space especially in the uk in hallways and under stair cupboards can become like massive dumping grounds with mountains of shoes consider having hooks for school shoes on the wall so basically like pegs for coat hooks but just low down and you can just hang the heel of the shoe on the hook and it just has a place for it it also means you're less likely to like get totally ruined and stood on as you're running around like headless chicken in the morning and as we talk about mornings where do your children actually get ready in the morning so a lot of parents think that clothing school clothes should be in kids rooms But if your child gets ready while watching TV in the morning or they don't like having socks on until the minute they're about to leave the house, why are we expecting them to have all their clothes upstairs? So I think having your uniform and having a physical place for it, you know, even if it doesn't make your living room look, you know, adult and wonderful, if it makes your everyday life easier, then do it just for the few years the kids are at school because I'm telling you now it goes really quick. So something like cheap plastic drawers with five drawers in, I found really useful. One for every day of the week. And on a Sunday, I chuck whatever they needed in each day ready so they could get themselves ready. I didn't need to remember sewing stuff on a Thursday because it would already be in the Thursday drawer ready to go. Because at a weekend, I had more time. I could get a bit more organised and do the massive you know, amount of laundry. So it made more sense to do it at a weekend than on a school night. Also, think about where do your kids take their clothes off? Now, if they always take their socks off when they're laying on the sofa when they get home, then put a laundry basket at the side of the sofa or get one of those laundry bags that you can just put socks in and hang it on the back of the sofa, for example, or on the side of the sofa. It saves you finding a pile of sweaty old socks down the back of the sofa in three weeks' time when you've run out and you've got no idea where they've disappeared to. So think about where things are going to get put actually in real life not in you know wonderful beautiful house land what actually happens in your house where do people take the clothes off where do people take the shoes off where does it happen and accommodate that rather than expecting someone to take the socks off when they're watching tv and then magically take them all the way upstairs and put them in a laundry basket because that is not going to happen also when we're talking about things disappearing Let's face it, school uniform does manage to disappear amazingly well. So make sure you've got your name tag sorted. So best ones to get are the stickers that you can literally just stick on things. And I would say if you can get away with not just sticking them on the label, because labels can be cut off very easy, or get a Sharpie. I I use the Sharpie on everything. Kids lose everything and coats or nice uniform does get stolen too. So make it less likely to get stolen and more likely to find its way back to you by putting your name or a kid's name or initials on everything, including their school shoes. Now is not the time to sort through kids' summer clothes. I know we want to like get all prepared because the winter season and autumn is about to happen or fall if you're in the US, but we're bound to get a mini heat wave the minute they go back to school. You know, Christmas stuff is going to go into the shops, but we're going to get heat wave. So it's probably a good idea that they're going to need their summer clothes a little while longer before we head into autumn. So it might not be the time to go through it and declutter that, but it might be a good time to look at winter footwear. Things like kids' wellies that they wore ages ago that might not fit anymore or definitely won't fit by the time they're ready to use it this time round. It's also definitely a really good time to sort through old uniform if you haven't already. Look at selling it cheap or by gifting it on the school's parent Facebook group or see if the um, school PFA want it. And it is a really good time to do it because I know that a lot of the parents will have ordered the school uniform and it won't come in time or it'll come and it's too big or too small or the child lost it already. So definitely look and see if you can make it cheap. And it is about making it cheap because I know that if you put a certain price on it, no one's going to buy it. They're too busy buying new or making do what they had from last year. 
So do make it cheap to go. And in some cases, it might just be easier to donate it. Things like old underwear. So if you've got young children, old pants and socks can be donated to nursery and primary schools as they like to have spares in case of like accidents. So that is a good out instead of putting it in landfill or putting it in a textile dump bit. Ask yourself, do your children really need that new stationery and pencil case every single year? No, they don't. Now is a great time to go through your pens, though, and any work that is like, you know, any excess that you can give to school that work, you can give give away, or you can send them to a really great charity, which is Pens for Kids in the UK. Now, I will put their details in the show notes, but that could be quite a nice evening, just sitting, going through all the pens and seeing what works and what doesn't and making it all look pretty new. And to be honest, just having a baby wipe over the pencil case is sometimes good enough to make it look nice and new again. Have you started your system for kids' artwork? If not, go back and listen to podcast 43, which covers this, and get that system up and ready to go straight away from the day they come back from school that first time. You want that system ready to go so the rest of the year can go really, really easily. Don't worry if you've not sorted out the previous years yet. Get this year's ready and started so that it makes it a lot easier as you go through. And do remember the first week back, by midweek, the kids are tired and the weekend might be spent in a state of exhaustion and recovery, especially if you are a neurodivergent family and you are. So make sure you have less activities planned and more decompression time. And that also means for you too. Yes, we've all got to get back into that routine of going to a bed at a normal time and getting up at a normal time rather than doing what we want. So start if you can the week before school, ideally, you want to start trying to set that clock back to times that you would normally get up for school and times you would normally go to bed for school as well. And I know everyone in the household is probably not going to like it, including you, but you know, you're going to be really tired too. How can you be your future friend to make the morning go a little bit quicker and easier for you? Can you create a breakfast station, for example, so you're not moving all around the kitchen and going into different cupboards? Can you just go to one? So can you have all your hot drinks and cups together, along with your bowls and the cereal, or put your bread near where the toaster is? What can you do to make the morning go quicker and easier for yourself? Sometimes it's about looking at where the stress is in the morning and trying to find a solution for that problem. And then what about in an evening? Can you create a small space for like a homework station, for example? So clear some space on the dining room table, pop a tub of pens on it and have that as where the kids can do reading or homework. You might also find it useful to have things like a visual timetable or checklist for your kids about what order to get ready in the morning or consider clocks or alarms for timings about what bit they should be doing when. Save you shouting up the stairs, have you done that yet? So you can set alarms and routines using smart speakers or you could do it the old fashioned way with clocks with different colours to show what should they be doing at what time. For example, when it's in the green zone, you should be brushing your teeth. When it's in the purple zone, you should be putting your clothes on. And also consider having a checklist by the door for you and for them with what they need to leave the house with. Sometimes just having that little visual reminder with it maybe laminated and if it's something extra that you need to add on to it you can do for the next day just makes it one less thing out of your brain and one more thing that you can just look at before you go and I think the main thing I really want you to know especially today is that for most parents and especially those of you living in clutter on your divergent is that the summer holidays can bring a massive amount of stress or they can also bring a, a massive amount of relief But either way, if it's neither or both, what they do do is they get us out of the school routine. And you absolutely need to be kind to yourself if you're struggling right now. If your home looks like a bombsite and you feel that everything's a mess and you're never going to catch up, you are not alone. Hopefully in a few weeks, you'll be able to start tackling it and get into the flow again. And you can do amazing things in a few months, honestly. So anyway, that's enough for me today. So remember, you are not alone. Be kind to yourself and keep untangling. Thanks for joining me for today's episode of Decluttering Untangled. If you found anything that I've said today helpful, please do me a favour. 
hit that subscribe button or leave me a review. It's like receiving a virtual high five that keeps me going and lets me know that I'm helping real people out there and I'm making a difference. Please remember, you're not alone in this. I'm building a community of fellow untanglers over on Facebook. Just visit the show notes for the link to my free decluttering community. So until next time, remember, you're not alone. You're not lazy. You can untangle your life.